Recently, I did a comparison and I bought a box of ready to cook shrimp that were already breaded. I wanted to see how they stood up against my recipe for homemade air fryer shrimp. And guess what? There's no comparison. You definitely wanna make these at home. They're super easy. Let me show you how to do it. Welcome to the salt and pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today, we're gonna make air fryer fried shrimp. And let me tell you, these are outstanding. Standing. They are just as good or better than fried shrimp that you get at a restaurant that are fried in oil. The textures are perfect. The shrimp are perfect. They are just simply perfect and they're easy to make. So first thing I would ordinarily do is start preheating because the breading process and the butterflying process doesn't take hardly any time at all. I mean, you definitely can get it done in 10 minutes. But because the air fryer, when it's heating up, can be a little loud, I'm gonna hold off on that. But if you're making this at home right now, start your air fryer, preheat it on the hottest setting, which for the Ninja Foodie is the broil function. For a full 10 minutes, you want it to preheat. Now let's talk about the shrimp. I am using jumbo shrimp. They are about, somewhere between 15 and 17 per pound. So that's how many shrimp it takes to make up a pound. That's usually how they're rated. These are wild caught, which I recommend, and they are not the easy peel. But guess what? For this recipe, you can use the easy peel. It makes no difference. You just wanna take the skin off, but you definitely want to leave the tail on because that's how we're going to hold our shrimp after they're air fried to eat, okay? It makes it really easy. Now, if you are a no shell, no way kind of person, don't worry about it. Take the tail off, it's perfectly fine. You're just gonna have to batter the whole thing, air fry it, and then you can just pick it up with your fingers and eat it. All right, okay, so here we go. We're gonna peel, devein, and butterfly this shrimp. I already have the other 10 done, so I'm gonna show you on two shrimp. The way that I do it is I peel off the legs here by holding pretty firm right here on the flush and just peel it away. When I get down here, I make sure that I hold the tail where I wanna keep the shell on and then just peel it back. And that way I know I won't go too far or accidentally take the tail off. All right, so there we go. And then I just run my fingers, make sure I got all the shells off. Now don't throw those shells away, keep them, freeze them. When you have a good amount of shells, like four to six cups of the shells, then you can make some uh, shrimp stock, okay? All right, now we've gotta get the vein out and butterfly the shrimp. Butterflying them is optional, you don't have to do it. In fact, you don't even have to take the vein out if you don't care about it, you can batter them up right now. But I like the look of a butterflied shrimp when I'm going to air fry it. It also has it cook a little bit faster and I just feel like it tastes better that way. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go down the back with a sharp knife. When you open this up, there will be sometimes, it's a dark looking, uh, vein that runs down the back. And sometimes it's orange, sometimes it's opaque, sometimes it's not there at all. So if you don't get one, consider yourself lucky. All right, now we are gonna butterfly the shrimp. And the easiest way to do that is to hold firmly on the underside of the shrimp, the tail's kind of resting in your palm, take a sharp knife and go down. You don't wanna go all the way through, so that's why I hold it here because I can actually open it up to see how butterflied it is so I can judge how deep I need to go with my knife, okay? Now, be careful, you don't wanna cut through it, and you don't wanna cut yourself, but that is all there is to it, to butterflying a shrimp, okay? And that one looks good, so now we will do the next one. Same thing, peel off the legs, peel around, get the shell off, hold down on the tail, so you make sure you don't go too far if you wanna keep your tails in Tacked for your fried shrimp. Very good. Hold your shrimp nice and tight there and go all the way down to remove the vein. And I just kind of scrape it off with a knife and then put it on a paper towel. And then keep going, pushing so you can see your progress. So you can see where you might need to go like a little bit deeper until you get them nice and butterflied. And that's all there is to it, so it's super easy to do. All right, let me clean up here. We're gonna get to breading and air frying our shrimp. 
All right, so let's get to battering up our shrimp. What I have here is a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, two eggs lightly beaten, one cup of breadcrumbs. Now we wanna season our flour and our breadcrumbs. I'm using a really basic seasoning. You could get so creative with this. You could add all kinds of things, make them really spicy, make them a little Old Bay if, that, if you like Old Bay flavors, but I'm keeping it real simple. They. I think that by keeping the spices simple, you really allow the shrimp flavor to come out. So that's how I prefer it. I have a half of a teaspoon of fine grind sea salt, half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half of a teaspoon of uh, onion powder, okay? Not salt powder. If you wanted to use salt, then cut out the salt. And then I just dump that right into the flour and mix it up really well to get it equally dispersed throughout the flour. And then we're gonna do the same thing, and it's the same seasoning blend with one extra addition. So it's a half a teaspoon of fine grind sea salt, half a teaspoon of the onion powder, half of a teaspoon of the garlic powder, and then two teaspoons of paprika. Not smoked paprika, just regular paprika. I like the way it gave a little burst of color on the outside, but the paprika is really totally optional. Okay, dump that into your breadcrumbs. Now, I know people really like to make uh, breaded food with panko, and you can absolutely do that. You could turn this into half breadcrumbs, half panko, and make your uh, fried shrimp that way, or you can use all panko. However, what I found, as far as if I'm comparing it to a restaurant-style fried shrimp that is you know, fried in oil, this was the closest. Okay, so I tried the panko and things like that, but this texture was the best, I thought. All right, now we're gonna do three breading stations, or dipping, I should say, really, because it's, it's what is it? Flour, dip, bread. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna put each shrimp into the flour first to coat it. That is gonna help dry up any moisture that's on the shrimp, or absorb the moisture, I should say, from the shrimp, and allow the egg to adhere. Then the egg allows the breadcrumbs to adhere without falling off, okay? So we have our beautifully butterflied shrimp here. You could absolutely put the flour into a bag and toss it around. That would be absolutely fine. I just don't do it that way because I like to control where the flour goes. I don't necessarily put the flour down where my fingers are holding on to the stem and I like to just dip it myself because then I know it's all coated and perfect to go into the egg mixture. So these are just two eggs, no seasoning at all. Dip it in there, let the excess drop off, and then put it in to your breadcrumbs. Now you can do this all with holding on to the tail, or if you wanna get a little bit of the seasoning uh, the breaded stuff onto the tail, you can certainly um, dip it all the way in the egg wash and then just use a spoon here to coat it. And that is all there is to it, to uh, putting your coating on the shrimp. The one thing you do wanna make sure though is down here where it's butterfly, you wanna make sure you get the breadcrumbs in there. All right, and then I just leave it right there and I continue on and do the rest of them the same way. All right, so we're finishing up our 10 minute preheat, which I use broil, but if you don't um, have broil or grill as it is called on other models, um, and you have just a regular air fryer, then use your hottest setting. I also wanna mention that I have the basket inside, so that surface is getting really hot. That's gonna help crisp up anything that's breaded, so I recommend doing that anytime you wanna air fry breaded food. Then we're gonna use a little bit of oil on the basket there. That's just gonna help the shrimp set up and not stick. And then we just lay them in there. And if it's hot, you're gonna hear a little bit of sizzling. Now, if you're making the frozen kind of shrimp that come you know, in a bag or a box from the grocery store, um, you don't need to oil because there's already oil in the breading itself for those types of foods, so you don't need to oil. But for the homemade version, it is gonna help. It's gonna give you a better uh, texture and taste. The type of oil that you use is completely up to you. You can use avocado. You definitely wanna use an oil that's neutral. Like, I wouldn't use olive oil, okay? All right, I'm gonna try to get all 12 of these in here. The amount that you're gonna be able to get will depend on the size of your air fryer, but I think I'm gonna be able to squeeze these in. 
I move this one over just a little bit more like that to get this one here, and then I've got one more to go. Let's see if we can fit it in. Oh, I think so. This one right there. Don't worry about the tails too much. I just want the flesh mainly sitting flat on the bottom. And then I do another little, just, you know, that's probably about two teaspoons, okay? Because the aerosol sprayers don't put out a lot at once. All right, and now we're gonna go to Aircrest. We wanna go 375, hit start. Take your time down to eight minutes, but check them at about six minutes, okay? Which we're gonna look for is the outer color, okay? The outer color of the breadcrumbs, because obviously you can't really see what's going on under the breadcrumbs. But six to eight minutes in my test batches has been absolutely perfect for perfectly cooked shrimp and a crispy breading. All right, so we'll check them in, in just about six minutes. Before I clean all this up, I also wanted to point out that there is quite a bit of breadcrumbs, flour, and egg left over. Now, I don't necessarily recommend cutting back on the ingredients by half because it's going to be a little bit harder to dip and get them covered. But, I mean, you can try it, certainly. But I wanted to point out that you can absolutely do 12 more shrimp with this, okay? You can also bread your shrimp and put them on a parchment lined tray and freeze them for later and then air crisp them instead of 375 to 400 for about eight to 10 minutes and they're gonna be perfect. All right, so it's been six minutes. Let's take a peek. Ooh, they're looking good. They are really looking good, but you know what? They are not quite done yet. I'm gonna go ahead and gently move them a little bit just to make sure that they're not sticking at all. Um, and some of them are a little bit sticky and maybe flip them over if you can. That's totally optional. And you can see that they kind of get a little bit, um, you know, stiff. So it might be hard for you to, to flip them and that's fine. You don't ha absolutely have to, but some of these are actually sticking and I'm surprised they've never stuck before. So I don't know why they are this time, but you know what? Oh, well, we had one stick. That's okay. If they're sticking, don't force them up. Just leave them alone. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do with the rest of them. I don't know why. They've never stuck before. Go figure, right? Okay, now we're going to keep going. And for the rest of the eight minutes, because I think it really needs it, especially with that sticking, it tells me that they just did not cook enough. Now, so why did they stick this time and not other times? Well, I don't know, really. It could be I'm using a different basket this time. So maybe this basket... It's a little bit older and maybe it doesn't have as much of the non-stick left on it, but it's very well seasoned, so it should be working fine. It could be that the shrimp have has a little bit more moisture in it because um, they were soaking in water to thaw and possibly that moisture coming out, the flour wasn't holding it enough, so then it wet the breadcrumbs, which caused some sticking. Uh, it could be that my pot just wasn't hot enough when it went in. So there's lots of variables that happen. So don't freak out if you have a couple stick. Most of them did not. Even the ones that stuck are still going to be delicious. So don't worry about it. Those will be the ones that you taste um, before you serve them to your guest. All right, let's go ahead and open the lid and give them a peek. And they look good. Tap on them. Can you, do they feel like they're crunchy? And they do. All right, let's go ahead and get that out. Looks good. That one looks perfect. Oh my gosh. Now, if you didn't like the color, you know, they're a little bit like on the reddish side. That is from the paprika, so you can omit that. But I just thought it gave it a nice look, like a real, you know, a deep fried shrimp. They look good, even though a couple stuck, they're still good. Look at that. Wow, they are beautiful. That one's the one that really stuck. Oh well, I'll, I'll try that one. I'll eat that one. All right, there we go. So you can see I've got a little bit in the bottom. I'm not gonna worry about that. Soak that up and it will be just fine and dandy. Now let me let these cool a minute and I'm gonna grab some cocktail sauce and we're gonna give them a taste. All right, I'm so excited because they look so amazing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and taste the one that got the, the bottom ripped off, you know? Um, 
All right, I'm gonna dip it in some cocktail sauce because that's how I like to eat mine. However you wanna eat your air fried shrimp, go for it. Mmm. Oh, that's spicy. Mmm. Delicious. Oh my gosh, so, so good. One thing I will say is that I just bought some inexpensive paprika because I was running out. And this time it imparted a little bit of a flavor that I don't really love. So I would probably cut that down to one teaspoon from two teaspoons. Now my older paprika from McCormick that I've used forever, it's probably so old it doesn't have much flavor, worked perfectly. It's up to you guys. These are amazing though. I hope you give them a try.